Hello, welcome to Wild Nathan National Park. I'm Margaret Flaherty, Supervisor Guide at the Ballycroy Visitor Centre. Wild Nathan National Park is one of six national parks in Ireland. The national park is 15,000 hectares in size, encompassing Atlantic Blanket Bog, the Nathan Beg Mountains, and extends from Bangor to Mulrani, from Ballycroy to Newport and up to Bellacorick. It's a landscape of mountains and bogs and forest, and it's the third largest that we have in the country. The visitor centre was open to the public in 2009, and since that time we've been running environmental education programmes. We have an exhibition that interprets the species and the habitats of the National Park. But we are also lucky to have an outdoor classroom here as well with different habitats that both children and adults can explore. So we have a two kilometre nature trail, which brings people around the hill at the visitor centre. There's views from the top of the hill of the Neffenbeg Mountains, of Ackle and the surrounding seascapes. We have a second two kilometre trail, 10 minutes drive south of the visitor centre called Claggan Mountain Coastal Trail. Visitors get to walk on a one kilometre wooden boardwalk and they return along the seashore where they might encounter species such as ringed plovers and otter and different seabirds. The National Park was designated as Ireland's first dark sky park in 2016. The park is one of the best places in Ireland and the world to see the night skies. Here at the Ballycroy Visitor Centre, we have lots of activities for people to do and things for people to see. We have an exhibition which interprets the national park species and habitats. There's a little about the dark skies. We've also got some habitats for people to explore outside. We've got a meadow, we've got a cereal plot that attracts pollinators and birds. We've got a two kilometre trail which gives people an opportunity to explore the bogland habitat. But today we're going to be focusing on one activity. We're going to be doing some pond dipping where we're, we will explore the life that lives beneath our bog pools. We're just making our way to the pond area it's only a couple of minutes walk from the visitor centre and we're meeting Michael Chambers who is the head guide here at the visitor centre and he's going to do a, a demonstration of pond dipping. So Michael is moving the net through the water in a figure of eight motion and he's seeing what kind of creatures he's getting in the main body of the pond. Some people come across these bog pools or ponds with their dark murky water and actually don't think that there's much life in them, but they're actually full of life. There's a diversity of animals and plants that live um, in these ponds. Today, we're hoping to find some of the animal life that depends on these water bodies. So we might find some amphibians, we might find some frogs or newts, or even some tadpoles. We would expect to find some dragonfly or damselfly larvae or nymphs. So when we see the damselfly or the da dragonflies flying around, they've actually spent the majority of their life underwater. So dragonflies and damselflies, they lay their eggs beside these water bodies. Larvae hatch out of these eggs and spend a huge amount of their life below the water. So as I said, the damselflies and dragonflies that we see flying around, it's only a very, very short part of their life that they are at that stage. We get a great variety of beetles in the pond as well. The whirligig beetles can be seen zooming around the pond on the top of the water and diving down deep. We also get the great diving beetle, which is really interesting. It can fly from pond to pond. Sometimes it leaves a pond when it gets too busy and they seek out a new pond. And to find the new pond, they use the reflection of the moon on the water to find their new place to live. While I've been talking here, Michael beside me has been very busy. He's been using the pond net to see what creatures are in the water. And now let's go and have a closer look of what he's captured. So I've already been around the pond and we filled up a few of these trays. 
that we've uh, scattered around the pond here with some very interesting creatures that we found living within the pond. So our ponds are very much full of life and so far we've found a number of tadpoles, some damselflies and we've a beautiful newt here making his way around the tray and uh, we've some diving beetles and back swimmer beetles also in here and there's also some phantom larva and midge larva. So already you can see there's a huge range of biodiversity in a small little pond like this. Michael's done a great job today. He's found an abundance of different types of creatures. So we're going to go through these trays now and identify the different animals that we found. To do this, we're going to use some charts that we have, some identification charts. Um, we can download a lot of free stuff online now, so you don't need to worry about buying things. But we have a few here that we've bought over the years. So this is a great one that's showing lots of different um, types of animals that you get in fresh water, like our pond here at the visitor centre. So we'll be using that today. There's other really simple ones as well. You can download templates um, off the Irish Peatland Conservation Council. So you can download this for free, print it out and make your own bug dial. So this is a really um, neat thing to use. Very fun activity to get the kids to actually prepare the bug dial in advance print and then bring it out to the pond to identify the creatures. And if you really, really get into your pond life, you can also buy like little books like this, which are full of really nice photographs and descriptions of lots and lots of different types of animals and even plants that you get um, in ponds as well and in rivers and lakes and all different types of freshwater bodies. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and take some of these animals out. And I find using a spoon is a really easy thing for kids to do. It's good for adults as well. And you can just pick up things on the spoon. So you can just search through the trays, which are white. So it makes things a little easier to see. And you just literally scoop up the animal. And here is my first one, which is a great, great um, um, animal. This is a nymph of a damselfly. So earlier I was talking about the importance of ponds for the life cycle of things like damselflies and dragonflies. I know this is a damselfly because it has three tails. Um, so you can see that. It's got quite a thin body and it's got two really large compound eyes at the top of its head. So this is a really nice find today. So Michael's done a great job for us. So that, as I said, is our damselfly nymph. So we'll put him back in and I'll find something else a little different. We've got lots of tadpoles in here, so I'm sure you're all familiar with tadpoles. Obviously, water bodies are really, really important places for tadpoles for their development. So earlier in the year, around February time, um, March, we had lots of sounds coming from the pond here. We had croaking frogs and it's the male that's actually croaking. He is croaking really loud, trying to attract a female. The female comes to the pond and then she is, um, she, her, the, the male and the female mate and the frog spawn is fertilized and you get rafts of frog spawn, thousands and thousands of eggs. A female can lay nearly 4,000 eggs at a time and she'll head off once she's laid her eggs. The male will hang around and hopefully get another female. So these um, tadpoles have hatched out of that frog spawn. Not all of them will survive. Um, it's a pretty tough place to live upon. Um, there's a lot of predation that goes on. And I'll see, can I find one of our ferocious predators um, in here? Um, just bear with me. So as you can see in the pond, it's very brown and murky, lots of vegetation. And the animals that are living there tend to be the same color. So it can be sometimes um, a little difficult to see um, what you've got. And I've actually got in action here, 
a diving beetle larvae feeding on a tadpole. So we've got predation <laughs> happening in front of our eyes here. So anybody of a sensitive nature should look away. What we've got is we've got a great diving beetle and it's got its jaws wrapped around a poor unfortunate tadpole. But that's life in the pond for you. It's a, it's a tough place to live. So again, this diving beetle, it does live in the pond as an adult, but it has a di very different form in its larval stage. Very elongated body, but with these giant jaws or pinchers at the top of his body. And you can see him in action there. It's a bit gruesome. So on to our next um, species. So I don't think I have um, found the whirligig beetles. So these are small little beetles. They're oval in shape. I did see some earlier on. Now the whirligig beetles, they swim really, really fast. They're quite small. There he is. Oop. Got him. So this again is another beetle that we get in the ponds. It's called a whirligig beetle. And as you can see, he's a quite a fast swimmer. And if you look closely, they can kind of have a green iridescence to their exoskeleton. So the shell that covers their body and they have red legs. And this is the one that you'll see zooming around the top of the water. It will be diving deep down into the water body as well. Oval in shape. So that is the whirligig beetle. So let's see what else we have here. Oh, so we've got a couple of different types of what are called water boatmen that live in the pond. We've got the lesser boatman and then the greater boatman. And another name for the greater boatman is the back swimmer because this actually swims on its back. Now, I'm hoping it doesn't fall off the spoon here. Um, so what we're looking at, we're looking at the belly of this animal. He's dark on its belly and he's white underneath, but the underneath part is actually his back. And in some countries, I think they refer this um, to this animal as the water wasp. And this back swimmer can actually give you a nasty bite. So this is one you need to watch out for if you do come across it and definitely use a spoon to pick it up. This animal is a ferocious predator. What it does is it it punctures the outer exoskeleton of its prey or the skin of its prey and it injects a toxic saliva into the prey and sucks out the insides. Pretty gruesome again. I should have probably put a sensitivity warning on that but this as I said is life in a pond. It's a tough place to live. Now I'll see if there's anything else um, that we can find in here. So I've got one final thing to show you. So I'm just gonna move the, this tray aside and I'm gonna put this into its own tray because it's quite a big creature that I'm gonna show you next. So we're really lucky here at the visitor center to have this pond because it's a great habitat for lots of different creatures and this one is pretty special. So what we have here is we have what's called the smooth mute. In Ireland, we only have three native species of amphibians. We've got the common frog. We've got a natterjack toad, which has restricted distribution down in the south of the country. And we have the smooth newt. And the smooth newt is actually quite common but a lot of people don't see them. They're very, very secretive animals. What they do is they hibernate over winter and then they come to places like our pond here at the visitor center to lay their eggs. They don't lay eggs like the frogs do. They lay singular eggs and attach them to vegetation. And they might lay, a, a female might lay a few hundred eggs at a time. This is actually a male newt. And I can tell that he's a male because he has um, uh, a crest and I'm just going to move a little bit back here so you can see him. 
So you can see he's got this crest down his back. And we know that it's a, it's a smooth newt because we don't have any other newt species in this country. And if you looked underneath him, and I'm not going to disturb him now too much, um, you will see that he has an orange stripe on his belly as well. So that's another key identification features of smooth newts. So one of the most important things to do is when you're finished is to put everything back where you found it. Um, this pond is a habitat for those creatures. They won't survive outside it. And the principles here in the National Park are to leave what you find. So it's very, very important to return these animals to their home when we're finished. I hope you enjoyed the little taster of our pond dipping activity at the Ballycroy Visitor Centre that we've done today. As you can see, it's a really easy activity for children to do and it's not that expensive. You know, you can get a net fairly cheap. There's lots of ID charts that you can download off the internet and a jar or something to collect the items. You know, it's very, very easy and children love it. They love digging around in the ponds with a net and then they're rewarded with finding the different kind of creatures that are living there. Here at the Ballycroy Visitor Centre is one of a, f a favourite activity for our visitors, whether the schools or the public. And we regularly do this pond dipping activity. It's free to come and visit us and we'd love to see you here after lockdown when it's safe to travel again. And we'll be doing lots of different types of activities and you can just come in, look at the exhibition, go for a cup of coffee and come out to our pond and see maybe what you can find out here with the help of one of our guides, of course.